Hello, it's March 2012. This is my new subject that I purchased from a local nursery, the Rhododendron Ramapo. I really love the flowers. It's tiny and has a nice color. Has good branching, good trunks, nice peeling barks. Um, I always love this type of uh, dwarf rhododendrons, but I never had good luck keeping them. They usually die within two years of, of making them into a bonsai. So I will keep trying. You know, I have a feeling they don't like the roots disturbed too much, and also they probably like a, a deeper pot. You know, they don't like too shower. Uh, I'm sorry, shallow. So th that's my feeling. So uh, we'll see. I'll wait until I'll enjoy the flowers now. I'll wait until they finish blooming and start working on them. That will be the best time to do. Still flowering strong here in mid uh, April. Beautiful. Okay, wow, well, now it's uh, April 25th. Uh, flower have faded. The new shoots start to grow very fast. I mean, that uh, took me off guard. I was gonna repot this plant later, but the shoots are growing so fast that I'm gonna. I better do it now. You know. So the plan. My plan for this is to um, do a very light trimming on the top and very light trimming on the bottom for the roots. Because in my past experience, this is what I found. I mean, this is not, even though they belong to that Zalia, you know, very similar to a Zalia, the rhododendron that I worked on seems to be more demanding, more delicate. So I found out it doesn't withstand so heavy pruning or uh, on the top or heavy pruning in the roots. So I'm just going to do a light pruning and take my time with this plant. Do a light pruning, probably remove about a third of the top foliage and a third of the roots plant it in a training pot let it grow and then slowly reduce the size you know by by pruning more and more uh, each year so that's a plan so i'm just going to use a heavy cutter here for example in a, in a place where this area i see a lot of branches a lot of branches coming out uh, just remove one of them. For the styling, I mean, I just gonna follow what the plan do for now. I'm not gonna do give it a definite style. So I'm not pruning for style. I'm I'm not doing uh, shape pruning. I'm just gonna do branch reduction for now. So I don't have to worry about what style. Of course, this is also a good time to, you know, to remove all the branches that are growing in the wrong direction, that are crossing, that are growing upwards, straight upwards, or going, growing straight downwards. You know, you remove those too. You know, like here, this one, you know, it's a nice, interesting branch. But kind of too long, just gonna cut it shorter. You know, pick a spot where there's a branch coming out. And just like Azalea's, you will see some point where a lot of branch is gonna come out from one area, like this one here. And you just have to uh, reduce that right now. You know, take this opportunity to reduce that. Uh, you know, I'm gonna cut out the one in the middle, for example, and leaving just the, uh, the two others. And for example, here you will see an area where there's a lot of branches coming out. You know, so you just, just have to reduce them. It's just too crowded here. You know, too many branches coming out from the same point. And so in general, 
the switch the view here you know like here there's so many uh, coming out from here and I'll need to re reduce that and uh, I usually in this case I pick I choose to remove the thicker one you know and then you know there's still a lot more so you have to reduce them um, another more clear example will be here you see there's uh, like five branches coming out uh, so the ideal is to end up with only two of these but you don't have to do this now and since I don't want to prune too much I can just remove you know one one or two I still leave with you know three of it and and I can reduce this further in the next pruning session so I don't always have to uh, do it now it's just I'm doing this gradual pruning thing okay after 20 minutes of pruning you can see from the top you know the plant has opened up it looks kind of dense over here but it's okay I'm just gonna maybe clean that up later and you can see the amount of branches that I removed now I'm gonna do the more delicate cuts I mean of course you have to remove the dead flowers like this ones you know it's kind of time consuming but you know remove the dead flowers and for this new growth that are coming out you know there's five of them same thing try to reduce them uh, you know like for example this one is growing inward toward the plant I usually will remove that and you know kind of like this two this three so I'm just gonna remove this one I'm just gonna leave three for now as I said you know the ideal is to end up with two but you can do that gradually so right now three and later on maybe in the next year pruning I will remove one of them maybe this one this part is actually the very time consuming removing the dead flowers and uh, thinning out the new growth so make sure you have plenty of time set up set aside for this it's probably gonna take me more than 30 minutes This rhododendron actually smells good as you're cutting, you know, all these branches and leaves. It actually smells very nice, like a some kind of lavender style of smell. It's very nice. Okay, I'm done. Actually, after 40 minutes, this is the uh, view from the top. This is as much pruning top pruning I'm going to do with the plant for now for this year by the way this is April 2012 yeah I actually remove quite a bit you might notice I actually left some of the lower hanging branches you know as usual before I would have removed this little branches down the bottom but I feel that these could be useful for me in the future when I when I actually decide for the style of this bonsai so I'm gonna keep those for now and not remove those okay now I'm ready for the potting <laughs> 